I'm Angie Cooksey. Welcome to this episode of The Next Page. This is a special episode of The Next Page because it is our one year anniversary and we want to thank you, the viewers, for making our program successful, invigorating, and enlightening week after week, both by participating as our viewers and for all of you out there who have been our guests on this show. The Next Page is a show that we share with Birth to Five, we being the Wayne County Community uh, Literacy Coalition. The Wayne County Literacy Coalition and Birth to Five are organizations that promote and support literacy in all of its forms throughout the Wayne County. I also today want to give a special shout out to my husband of 37 years. Happy anniversary. He's not only a fantastic husband, but he's one of the most loyal viewers of the next page. So happy anniversary. I want to welcome my guest today, Dana Sinclair. And I'm, I'm happy to share my anniversary with you today, Dana. Well, thank you for having me here. Dana Sinclair is the Community Outreach Coordinator for the NATCO Empowerment, wait a minute, the NATCO Community Empowerment Center. How did I do, Dana? You did good. You did good. <laughs> Very good. We are so happy to have you on the next page today because our topic this afternoon is literacy in all of its forms. Today, we're talking about financial literacy. So that prompted me to invite you to join us on the program because, Dana, I think financial literacy is something that you understand a lot about and that you help others understand a lot about. Tell us a little bit about what you do in your position and just uh, your take on financial literacy and its importance for us. Well, um Again, thank you for having me here. Happy I'm very you. excited to be able to speak to everybody. Um, I don't have an anniversary or anything exciting <laughs> like that. I apologize. Um, I have been with the NATCO Community Empowerment Center since January, and this has been a very big difference from my past and my experience. It's ah. very interesting that you have me on here with Birth to Five <laughs> because early childhood is where the life that I come from. Ah. Um, but at the Empowerment Center, we do a lot of things based around financial literacy. What NATCO, the credit union, discovered is a lot of their members were having difficulty with that financial literacy piece. Interesting. And so financial counseling became something that they saw as a need for the community and therefore came about the Empowerment Center. I see. We do a lot with budgeting, um, debt consolidation, debt management, credit, fixing credit, building credit, uh, those kinds of things. We also work a lot with families who, or individuals who want to improve their lives by finding a new job, yes. build, uh, writing a resume. We have a collection of clothes we call the career closet that are more professional looking clothes. So Excellent. if you're looking for a job, we have people that come in that have been taking care of sick relatives and haven't had a job for years. We have people come in that want to change their jobs, those kinds of things. Um, and then we also connect people to social services in the area th that need be. We have a huge program called Circles Whitewater Valley, which is a partnership between United Way and NATCO Credit Union Empowerment Center um, that is focusing directly on bringing people out of poverty. I love that. That is fantastic. Because financial literacy, Dana, has important components that we all need to understand. And, and financial literacy may or may not have a lot to do with reading. It has a lot more to do with understanding. So wherever you are with your literacy skills in general, financial literacy is accessible for you to grab onto, to learn about, to understand. Financial literacy begins as we kind of think about those jobs and our earning potential and bringing that income in and understanding the value of our work. At the center, tell us a little bit about how you work with Wayne County residents to help them understand their talents and potential and how to connect those to the right sorts of jobs or employment. One of the things that we really do and we really look at very closely is when you're building a resume, what is your past? What is your future? What do you want your future to be, I should say? Beautiful. What is your what is your past? What do you want your future to be? Yes. And where is the gap? 
Beautiful. And is there a gap? Maybe there's not a gap. Maybe you think there's a gap. A lot of what holds people back is their own hangups, their own attitudes about money, about finance, about jobs. Um, one of the big gaps we see in Wayne County is people not having an education. Yes, right. Um, therefore, that is a stumbling block for them. Sure. Um, but we have a lot of options in Wayne County yes. for education. When it comes to that actual financial literacy, it's almost one of the key things that we try to do is build a relationship with our clients. Beautiful. Because if I can build a relationship with you, and maybe you're not ready to go back to school yet. I just <laughs> want to find a job. I don't want to worry about school yet. I just want to find a job. But if I can build a relationship with you, maybe yes. six months from now when I say Excel Center, you might buy into that. Right. Um, so it, it, it's really about believing in the person, building that relationship based around uh, respect and not just doing all of the patting on the back, but doing a little bit of being an accountability person as well. Sure. I know you can do this. I will go with you yes. to the Excel Center and get those applications that you need. Let's get you online and fill out your SNAP benefits for food stamps. Sure. Let's get you online and fill out something for insurance. When you can get those things taken care of, then yes. you can really worry about the next step in your financial literacy. Right, which is we've got the income coming in. Now, how do we match it realistically and practically with our expenses, the things that we need? You've hit on some key components, food, clothing, and let's call insurance part of our shelter, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, these services at NatCo, are they available to anyone in Wayne anyone. County? So anyone in Wayne County. I don't have to be a member of NatCo. Nope. And it's uh, completely free. Wow, that's incredible. Talk a little bit about the programs and the activities, Dana, that the center sponsors to help our viewers understand that relationship between my income and my expenses, because that's where some people get in trouble with financial literacy, isn't it? Yeah, that I really, well, speaking from personal experience, <laughs> that's really honestly has happened to me. Of and it wasn't the fact that I was living in poverty. I should have had enough money to to meet all of the needs that I had. Where, where, the, where the center comes in is you are getting one-on-one -on -one assistance in looking at your personal budget. Tara Gray, who is the director of the center, she is our budgeting guru. And you will get one-on-one -on -one assistance with her. You bring in your bills, you bring in your income, and we're gonna sit down, she's gonna sit down. I can do it too, but she's the one that really is good at it. Sit down with you and have that conversation. And some of it's a tough conversation. Sure. Um, but you're also going to put in that budget things like entertainment, not just yes. the necessities. Because if you think, I can never do, well, yes, you can. Mm. If you do all of this right, you're going to have 10 bucks to rent a movie and buy some popcorn. Sure. That's entertainment. Right, right. Th those kinds of things are, are going to happen. Um, and, and that really is one of the big things. Another thing that we're working on, which actually our fourth class is tonight, we have the Circles program, and we are focusing on budgeting tonight. So that is, that is another program that the center um, really focuses on in, in bringing that. And I love hearing that these classes are in the evening because that way, even if I work during the day, I can attend in the evening. What if I work in the evenings? Are there some staggered times for these offerings? The circles training is a series. Okay. So that is something that is only going on at this point in the evening. Okay. But we will always work with people. If they have the need, the desire, you know, we're normally open from 8.30 to 5. That's our normal work hours. But say you call me and say, you know, I get off work at 5.15 and I go into work at 8.45. Yes. I'm going to say, okay, this is a time, this is a place you come here and, and we will work with you. Because the whole point is to help those people in the community that need it and or want it. And I will tell you, the Empowerment Center opened, I believe, in September of last year. So okay. we've had our year anniversary. Oh, congratulations. Um, <laughs> thank you. You are having an anniversary. <laughs> I'm having an anniversary. <laughs> um, but I have seen over the nine months that I've been a part how it has really picked up people starting to learn what we do, um, 
people starting to be seeing it as we help everybody, yes. not just this group or this group. This is this is appropriate for anybody. Yes. Um, I have been excited about learning how to teach the trainings that we're doing for sure. for circles because I'm like, oh, I could use that, and oh, I can use that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we all can. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great point. And would you agree also that unless you sort of deliberately think about financial literacy, absolutely, it might might slide off your plate. And, absolutely. And again, another reason we kind of get in trouble. One of the big things that we talk about is write it down. Do oh, you have sure. a written plan? Yeah. Because if you do not have a written plan, and I'm not even saying, I, I think everybody should have a written budget, but sure. it, I'm not saying, if, do you have a written plan to go from point A to point B? Right. If you don't have it written down, you are less likely to follow it by a long shot. Sure. Um, you are really really benefiting yourself by writing down the plan. Yes. Um, and posting it somewhere where you're gonna see it. Yes. Posting it, posting it on the dash in your car so when you think about driving through that McDonald's to get that pop, yeah. and granted it's just a dollar seven. Right. But you know what? I know my previous job, I got one every day. So yes. that was over seven dollars a week. Sure. And Oh boy, thirty dollars a month, and and if I if I am a viewer today, and I all of this sounds great, but maybe I don't have the best math skills or reading skills, I could come to the center, oh, absolutely, and you'll help me work through absolutely. those components of financial literacy. You mentioned earlier getting on the computer to sign up for this and that. Is there also a little bit of help at the center if I don't know very much about how to work absolutely. on computers? Absolutely. Absolutely. Fantastic. Um, we are. We have three computer bays that are available um, at any time that we are open. There is paperwork that people have to fill out, and we will sit with people, help them as much because I'm not the best on a computer, but I will help them as much as I can. Sure. And and I don't think um, people that are challenged with their literacy skills, with their number skills. It's very interesting because Tara and I at the at the Empowerment Center, I'm like, she's the numbers person, I'm the letters person. <laughs> and 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 that's kind of how we split it up. So we, you know, we get that piece of it. And it is a very judgment free zone. Yes. Because a lot of people that have found themselves in trouble financially blame themselves so they don't want to think about it. That's right. another pitfall. Yes. Yes. I don't want to look at it. Yes. It's there. That 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 bill's there <laughs> calling. I'm not answering. Whereas if you look at it, if you answer the phone, if you address yes. it, if you get a plan together, then you can get yourself to where you are managing your resources. Yes. Not your resources and your finances managing you. And that's the key to that's the key. That's financial literacy. Dana, you are located and we'll run it across the bottom of the street. We screen. are at sixteen twenty seven East Main Street. Beautiful. Right next to the McDonald's with the play place. Wonderful. And that's where how we tell everybody. Beautiful. And um, my telephone number is nine eight three four seven six four. Beautiful. Dana, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me. It was great fun. information. Thank you. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the Birth to Five segment of The Next Page. I'm Jim Cohen, your host, Executive Director of Birth to Five. Uh, this month we're welcoming back Linda Irwin, who's the Program Manager for the Parents as Teachers program at the Birth to Five. And Linda's going to talk to us today a little bit about home visiting, uh, what the goals of home visiting are, and exactly what happens during a home visit. Linda, welcome back. It's great to have you here. Thank you. This is To start off, why don't we talk a little bit about what are the goals, what are you trying to achieve ultimately with home visits with a, with a preschool child and, and their parents? When we come into a home, we want to help the parents be their child's first and best teacher. They're the ones that's with them all day long. Um, they're the ones that's there when the childs are learning new experiences. And being their first teacher means we want to help them with developmental activities. We want to help them um, get their child's curiosity going, their problem solving, help them with their language so they can build vocabulary, work on motor skills, work on social emotional skills so that they can develop as they need to on time. Good, okay. So 
in terms of trying to help moms and, and, and kids develop mm -hmm. in this way, what kinds of activities and strategies do the parent educators bring into the home? We like to start out with mentoring. We'll come in and um, talk to the moms about concerns that they might have, um, what was the, their parenting that they had as a child, sure. so that that will see, be a reflection on how they're going to parent. Um, we want to talk about any problems that they might have had at childbirth, delays that the child might have had at that point. And then we want to come in and show them developmental activities that they can do with the kids. Um, and literacy, we always have a reading piece in our literacy and we show them how they can share books with their children. And a lot of times our parents, um, if they can't read or they feel that they can't read well, we can show them that you can still share books with picture books. So we model and show them working with their children what they can do with their children. Okay. And, and just, to, just to make a point here, um, when you talk about reading to your child, at what age can you start or should you start reading to your child? You should start reading before they're even born. We believe in that because okay. um, it gets the parents in the habit. It gives that time there. And who knows if the child can't hear it. but for sure when they are born because um, there's other things involved in reading to the child. You're holding the child so you're working on attachment, they're hearing your voice, they're getting that type of contact with you that they wouldn't have gotten anywhere else. So you should always be able to, to share a book with your child. Sure, plus a big piece of e even just having a conversation or talking to your child or having a running commentary as you play or bathe or feed your child, right. um, it, it creates stimulation and helps to develop synapses in the brain. That's right. Right, okay. Um, so talk a little bit specifically about some of the kinds of activities that you may take into the home to do with mm -hmm. a mom and talk about how you would how you would present it to mom and how you would explain it and then how, how you would work with the child and and what the value to the child is okay when we go into the home for our home visit the very first piece that we do is talk to the moms about what have they seen their child do in the past month mm -hmm. what new skills have they picked up new words um, are they doing new activities type thing so that we can kind of mentor them in being observant and watching their children and, and watching for things. Before the end of the visit, we may mention things to watch for the next month, and so they've already been given a little bit of a heads up to look for. So we have a little bit of conversation. Then we take in an activity for each child that is based on the age of the child and the stage of development they're at. I brought a few of the activities that we might have done, and, and we also want families to see that they don't have to go out and spend money. They can use things at their own home. And so, you know, you can take um, a cottage cheese container or something else, and we want to work on fine motor with very, very young children. And so when we start, we'll take the lid off and just take the, the um, tops of the cans and just show them how they can drop them in and out. That's going to, and then we explain to the parents, this is eye-hand coordination. Mm -hmm. This is problem solving on how they're going to get it out. It's fine motor because they're using their fingers. And there's lots of different uh, milestones that can be used from this. So after, you know, a, a very, very small child can do this with dropping it in. And then when they get a little older and you want to cut the lid in the top of it, that makes it a little bit more. And, and it's interesting when a child's done that the first time, they can't figure out how to get it in. And so that's getting the brain to develop on problem solving, curiosity type thing until they can finally get it in. So there's many steps to it. Um, and so these are some of the activities that we would bring in. For an older child, then we would go on into the clothespins and a smaller hole for it. And it's the same type thing where they're still doing this. And this is going to help the finger muscles, the hand muscles for when they're writing, when they're cutting scissors, when they're getting older. So these, these type of development. We will take in puzzles because it helps with the matching of the picture on the puzzle board to the puzzle piece. It helps picking up the piece. It helps fitting it into the hole. So there's lots of brain development. Um, even in using simple puzzles type things. Okay. I'd like to take a second and, and go back to and touch on reading, uh, reading to your child again. Um, 
uh, most people say, oh, well, you just read the book. You know, you just read the words and that's all you have to do. But that's not really the case, is it? No. So give us an idea, and I think we're talking a little bit here about what they call dialogic reading. Dialogic reading, yeah. yes, and, and we've all been trained in dialogic reading, and it's, it's so simple that anyone can do it, but when you show the book to a child, you talk about the cover, the, pi the pictures on the front, past experiences or maybe even future experiences. Um, you may have a book on a farm, um, which is one of our activities that are coming up called Down on the Farm and you talk to the child about the farm and what do they see on the picture and if there's pictures of animals what sounds do the animals make so it's a conversation that you have be be between you and the child even before you start opening the book if it's an older child you can talk about where the author's name is on the book and, and get more specific on that then as you open the book you can read the story word for word but you also want to pull out things that you see in the picture um, for some of the moms who aren't as comfortable reading to their child, you can talk about the pictures. Ask them what they see in the picture. Ask them what they think is going to happen. Um, ask them, you know, like if there's animals hiding, can you find the pig? Have them point to different pictures in the books because that's one of the milestones is being able to point out um, things that they see in books. Or if there's a pig on one page and, a, and you turn the page and on another, can you find the pig somewhere else in the book? So. Th the big part is having the conversation with the Having book. the conversation. And, and if we're talking with a, a preverbal child, then it, it, it also, the parent would have that call and response in place of the right. child. So they would ask the question and possibly give the answer so right. they can have the complete dialogue. And so that he could hear that, yeah. And I mean, I have seen um, six month olds, seven month old children who are sitting up in their mom's lap. And of course, they're not going to understand it, but I, I have seen them watching the book, and they like to turn the pages. If you use the board books that we use for smaller children with the thicker pages, mm -hmm. they're able to turn the pages. And again, that's back to the fine motor of turning pages and using your fingers on it and getting the experience. And so if you start at a young age, they're going to learn to love books and stay with that for a long time. Now, I know that one of the big components of, of the Parents as Teachers program and our home visiting is uh, doing health screenings and developmental evaluations. Speak to that a little bit, could you please? Mm -hmm. We do, when a new family enrolls, we do um, a developmental screening in the first 90 days, and then we do it every year on their birthday after that. And we're looking at the intellect, which is problem solving and thinking skills. We're looking at language and the amount of words and how many words in a sentence they're using. We're looking at gross motor and fine motor. And gross motor is the big muscles, riding the bikes, running, jumping. Fine motors are the fingers. And we're looking at social emotional. Um, we're taking care of themselves, dressing themselves, brushing their teeth type thing so that we can make sure that there are no delays in any of those developmental activities. Because if there is a delay, we want to help the mom work on that area so that there won't be a delay by the time they are ready to be in school. And why is, and, and why is kindergarten, and now that leads us to kindergarten right. readiness, not, not just from the standpoint of um, ha having all their faculties developed mm -hmm. appropriately, but th there, there's a lot more to kindergarten readiness today than I, certainly when I was in school. Mm -hmm. So w what kinds of things are we looking at um, and expecting five-year-olds to do when they enter kindergarten. You're right. When I was in kindergarten, it was playtime all the time. Yeah, and they right. had the kitchen, and they true. had all the little stations, <laughs> and it was all social. That's not what it is today. Today, um, they are learning their letters. They are learning to read. They are learning to cut and write their names. They need to know their address. And so um, by finding any delays that would be holding them up when they get to kindergarten, we can take care of those so that when they go to kindergarten, they can be in the classroom the whole time and they'll be ready to re receive their full potential. When my grandson was in birth to five, um, he was found at three years old to have a speech delay. Mm -hmm. And so he went to speech therapy. He was referred to First Steps and he went to speech therapy. When he went to kindergarten, he didn't have a speech delay. So he was able to spend his whole attention in the classroom with the teacher, not have to be pulled out um, for speech. And he was ready, he could be understood, and he had a better start. 
So it sounds like, you know, it, it, we know if a child is going to be behind when they start kindergarten and, and all this other stuff they have to learn, they have to learn the alphabet, mm -hmm. they're actually learning to read, they're developing some more, more critical um, fine motor skills. If they're not up to speed, they're going to be behind, aren't they? They are going to be behind. So that means conceivably a child can leave kindergarten and not be ready for first grade. And that will just continue all the way down. When I taught fourth grade, I had so many children that were so far behind because they just kept getting passed on and on and the delays just kept going on and on. And they will achieve, but they won't be able to achieve their full potential. And we want to help them receive their full potential. And, and we know one of the things that we know today is that third grade is a critical point. Yes. If a child does, uh, is not reading at third grade level when they enter fourth grade, they have a four times greater chance of not graduating high school. Um, so kindergarten readiness is more, more critical today than ever before. So we, we, I think you've talked about, and I think we understand what the benefits <laughs> to, the com to the individual family and child are, but do you know what some of the benefits for the community are about having kids ready for kindergarten? Well, it's helping the schools and it's helping the teachers um, so that they can help them reach those potentials. And, I mean, it's been good for the parents to be able to see you know, I can do this. And, and a lot of our parents have felt successful in themselves because they've been able to help their children feel successful. And some of our families that hadn't been able to finish school have wanted to finish school along with their children. And, and some of the other benefits to the community directly are, um, obviously, if children finish school and graduate high school, um, they're going to be productive members of the community. So that helps the community in the long run. Um, if, we, if we can keep kids in, in our main, mainstream, mm -hmm. our children, and keep them in regular classes, we're spending about half as much money to educate them as if they have, instead of them having to go into special classes. Mm -hmm. Well, Linda, I really appreciate uh, you visiting with us today and Thank sharing you. a little bit um, about what goes on in a, in a home visit with Thank parents you. as teachers. Uh, folks, uh, we're really pleased that you joined us today, and we look forward to seeing you next month on the next page.